Well, hello again, friends. It is the beginning of a new month, and that means it's time for our next Catholic Context monthly update. So thank you so much for joining us, whether you're joining us live or on the video recording. Uh, I'm Joshua Danis, the director for Alpha and Catholic Context, and I'm joined by my good friend, Sarah Kazmarek. How are you doing, Sarah? Good. It's good to be with you guys again to start a new series of topics. And also we've got Suzanne with us as well from the Catholic Context team. And so it's kind of a special month because for the first seven months of the year, we've been focusing on the seven best practices of Alpha. This month, we're out of best practices. So we've got to do something else. So actually, we're going to be focusing instead on the cultural values that uh, orchestrate Alpha excellence at a parish, uh, which is actually something we're very excited about. Uh, but of course, that doesn't change the most important thing about Alpha. What is that? Prayer. That's right. So Sarah, would you get started with a prayer? I'd love to. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Father, we welcome you anew into our lives. We ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. I ask for a blessing and a special grace for each person who is with us on this webinar today, God, that they would know the depths of your love, the invitation that you give to them daily. Uh, to be uh, your hands and your feet and your heart in this world today. And so, God, I ask that you would renew your commitment and your call to each of us, and you would empower us and equip us to go out and find more to join in the mission you have uh, for your kingdom to come here as it is in heaven. And we ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Okay, so let's unpack a little bit about what we're going to be speaking today. As I already mentioned, we've already finished going through the seven best practices. And so each of those best practices is kind of an activity that you invest in within your alpha experience to help it be the best it can be. Now we're shifting our focus because uh, while those strategic elements of these seven best practices are really important, as the saying goes, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So it's also really important to get a grasp on the culture and the values that lead to alpha excellence. And I would say that whereas the seven best practices are primarily about what we do inside alpha, these cultural factors are things that we like to see begin to take root in the larger culture of the parish as a whole, and ultimately to the benefit of everyone within your parish community, everyone who lives within your parochial boundaries, if you will, uh, it, we love it when our strongest churches, our most experienced and developed alpha churches, begin exhibiting these cultural factors. And so this is the language that we've adopted at this point. Sarah, would you like to introduce these? Sure. We're going to be talking over the next few months about uh, four particular aspects of culture, uh, a culture of invitation, uh, which has two parts to it that we'll break down that first one today, a culture of dependence a culture of unity, and a culture of hospitality. And I'm really excited to begin to start to dig into what it looks like to create um, cultures of these four things in our parishes. Uh, with the best practices, it's exciting um, to be better at what we do on Alpha, like those best practices, like what we do. But with the cultural factors, I feel like this is more about becoming who we are and what we're created and called to be. We're called to be a people of invitation, a people of dependence, of unity and hospitality. So I'm really excited to uh, start having conversation around this with you, Josh. That's right, me too. And if you've been part of the Alpha story for a while, there's a decent chance that you've heard this emphasis on culture in the past. If you're new to the Alpha story, um, then this might be a bit of a surprise to you saying, hey, wait a minute, you, you've just got this tool, this this program thing uh, that we've been using to evangelize folks. And absolutely, you can use Alpha simply as a program, but when you make the shift past the programmatic mentality and see that this is really just the platform, the opportunity to introduce people to Jesus and to these cultural gospel values, if you will, it, it just is so much more effective. It's so much more complete. So without further ado, let's dig into this first aspect of a culture of invitation. And we want to focus on leadership development. And so Sarah and I uh, joked for a while about this, and I, I finally prevailed upon her. She uh, did so somewhat hesitantly, but she agreed that we could use this little funnel. 
Uh, I love this little funnel to describe the experience of people making their way into your leadership pipeline and getting the leadership development they need, they need through Alpha. So picture the top end of the funnel as kind of Alpha. This is where all of your guests come. We love to say that Alpha is a zero entry point. It's a very easy, low threshold of engagement spot that anybody can come to, whether they've been to church before, whether they know anything about Christianity or Jesus, it's a big, wide open funnel. And our hope is that anybody in your larger community can feel comfortable and free coming and participating in Alpha. And then gradually the funnel gets a little bit tighter because some of those guests will wanna come back as helpers. And after they come back as a helper for a while, it gets still tighter. Some of those helpers might wanna come back as hosts. Some of those hosts, as it gets tighter and tighter, might wanna come back as prayer team leaders uh, or as administrators or as uh, managing the environment. And so as each of these uh, elements of the funnel gets tighter, we're creating this kind of compressed experience of formation to enable people to become the very best uh, leaders, volunteers, uh, formers of apostolate that they can be for the larger church. Yeah, if you are like Josh and you like this funnel image, maybe we'll come up with like a branded logo funnel desktop reminder that you can order to put on your desk to remind you to help invite people into the funnel. Um, but let Josh know if you liked this funnel image, encourage him because we did have some discussion <laughs> around that, but it makes total sense. And I think helps us um, begin to break open this idea of a leadership pipeline. So if you've been in the Divine Renovation Network or you've read um, some of the materials from Divine Renovation, this idea or phrase of a leadership pipeline may not be new to you. Um, but with what we're trying to do in Alpha Parishes alongside Divine Renovation Parishes is to create this space for a leadership pipeline in our Alphas and ultimately in our parishes at large. One of the things though we like to begin with is it does take an initial investment from the parish. This takes intentionality and strategic um, placement, invitation and movement throughout the leadership pipeline. So on the front end, it does require you to invest in it. But on the back end, the dividends that you will reap from it, we think far outweigh any kind of initial investment um, and planning that you might have to put into it. And generally, when we're speaking about this leadership pipeline, it's sort of like very alpha-esque in that we're meeting people right where they are. We don't say that you have to have all of these qualifications or check all of these boxes before you can join um, on the leadership um, or serve in leadership on alpha. So we meet people just where they are. We want to engage them with their leadership potential, always encouraging them and calling out the gifting that we see and then helping them grow in that role and then ultimately growing out of their role in Alpha, hopefully calling more workers into the vineyard of your larger parish where, I don't know about you, when I worked in the church, I was in desperate need of more people to labor alongside me. Um, and so this, we believe, is just a beautiful way that um, we can cooperate with the gifting that God has given someone, grow, help them grow in their service and leadership in Alpha, but then release them into serving in the larger church. That's right. So let's take a look at what this might look like in the best case scenario for somebody who comes to Alpha. So imagine you're someone who's been invited to Alpha, you've been invited three or four times, you finally say, okay, I'll go to your silly church event if you just get off my back. You arrive there, you're met with warmth and hospitality, you're blown away, and you're like, this is amazing, I'll be back next week. Gradually over the, the experience of those 11 weeks, you encounter Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, your life has changed, and you say, I want more of this can I come back? And somebody says, well, we don't want you to come back on team on, as a guest, but we'd love you to have, we'd love to have you come back and be on our team. We'd love to have you be a helper. And so you come back as a helper and as a helper, you're greeting people at the door, you're pouring water, you're smiling warmly. You're beginning to pray for the new guests on the second alpha and you're hearing the message over again. And this time it strikes you in a different way and you begin to get excited about the fact that you're not only experiencing this as a guest, but you're helping contribute to somebody else's life change. And so you come back as a guest for one alpha, and you come back, or you come back as a helper for one alpha, and you come back as a helper for a second alpha. And then one of the administrators of the alpha course taps you on the shoulder and say, hey, we're really impressed with the way your prayer life has come along. We're really impressed with the gentleness and the attentiveness that you've demonstrated in the mealtime with folks. We think you could be a host. 
and you say, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. But they pray with you and they ask you to discern and you say, okay, I'm ready to be a host. And so you come for your fourth alpha. The first one is as a guest and the two is as a helpers. You come as your fourth alpha as a host. And then as a host, you enter into the small group conversation time and somebody asks you a deep theological question and you can smile and say in all honesty, I really don't know the answer to that question. What does anybody else think? And so you, you succeed as a host in moving people further into their own journey. And you do this maybe once or twice with Alpha. And then you, you step up and they ask you to MC. And so you start introducing the jokes at the beginning of Alpha. You introduce the talks. You just keep on growing into this. And gradually throughout this process, your prayer life continues to improve. The rest of the Alpha team, the Alpha family is telling you about your giftings, what they're seeing out of you. And you feel called to go start a new ministry inside the church. And so over the course of four, five, six alphas, you've gone from being a guest who had no experience of faith, no experience of Jesus, to now you've gradually been empowered. Your gifts have been built up. You're ready to go out and do something more. Yeah, I love this rhythm of like growing and going that you're talking about, Josh, and that just recognizing that we know it's not prescriptive. We can't give you the A plus B equals C for every single person that will join your pipeline, but through our dependence on the Holy Spirit uh, and our walking and accompanying people as they are in part of this uh, pipeline and being formed and grown, um, the Lord will lead and guide and help them find that perfect place to serve as they move along the pipeline. I know for me, I think of a particular woman in my parish who came to Alpha and the first night Jody was really angry about being there. Uh, she was not pumped about the invitation someone gave her to come to Alpha, but throughout the process just gradually fell in love with the people at her table and fell in love with Jesus in a new way. She had been away from the church for about 15 years and was, had a lot of anger and a lot of wounds, um, that she just really needed Jesus to heal uh, on that alpha. And so she had such an incredible experience on her alpha. She wanted to come back. And so we invited her to join uh, the team and hosting and helping on alpha. And she threw out, I don't even remember how many sessions of alpha it was, brought every single member of her family to alpha. She accompanied them. She served them. Um, she served on team. And then it got to a point where she had brought most of her family and even her son's girlfriends on Alpha. And it was time for her to take this passion and this zeal that she had out into the larger church. And she even said to me, you know what? I want to be a catechist. I want to serve uh, in the role of catechist in the church. And not only do I want to be a catechist, I want to be an eighth grade confirmation catechist. And I'll take an all boy classroom, <laughs> which I was like, this is definitely a move of the Holy Spirit that someone would say that this is what I want to do. But she was so changed by her encounter with Jesus. And she was so passionate that everyone else would have that same encounter that she wanted to serve the larger church in that particular way so that she could help walk with these young men into their own encounter and relationship, um, hopefully with Jesus, as they were being prepared for the sacrament. So I just love her story as a way of um, just kind of highlighting or illustrating the way that she was moved through pipeline. And it wasn't necessarily like we checked boxes and we had charts. Um, and I was like, you have now reached this level. You may now move on to the next level. But we were both listening to the Holy Spirit and we were both walking and growing together um, to keep moving us through that pipeline. Okay, so now we'd like to spend a couple of minutes just talking about how do we grow these volunteers that we're inviting into the pipeline? Yeah, so the, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we hear a lot is, how do I get volunteers? How do I get new volunteers? I need more people because that's sort of the situation we often find ourselves in the church. So we just wanted to highlight, maybe if you're new to Alpha or if you're like, I need to reset this. I need to reset. I need to start over. I need to be intentional about creating a pipeline, but I do need some new volunteers. So how do I find them? Um, the first thing we would say, as we say with Alpha, uh, is to pray, but really pray intentionally. Uh, that the Lord would highlight or sort of bring to um, your consciousness people that he's calling into this mission of serving on Alpha. So pray intentionally and ask the Lord, Lord, I am open. Would you show me new people? Would you create new opportunities for me to engage new people um, in this mission of reaching the lost through Alpha? So start to pray intentionally, consistently, 
and fervently um, for new volunteers, trusting that the Lord is so willing to meet us in that. That's right. We always begin with prayer. Uh, the next thing I want to encourage you to do is identify somebody you can work with who already really has a charism for invitation. The scripture would refer to this person as a person of peace who has access to a unique community or a unique group of people and really has the gifting uh, to invite others in the story. And I need to utilize this a lot. I have a tendency looking at this nationally of trying to identify people to draw into the story and um, recognize their giftings, identify coaches and whatnot of going directly to the people that I know. Uh, I often forget what incredible opportunity there is in going to the connectors who already know a lot of people in a local community. So likewise, in your church parish, who can you go to as a really strong connector who's really got that invitational spirit um, and also has a certain level of discernment that they can help you identify who the right person is? And maybe this, this person of peace is in fact the right person to even make the invitation rather than we ourselves. Yeah, I think of a woman, even in my own parish, Josh, who was on the Alpha team, had such a fire and a passion for reaching the lost, but she also had a charism for invitation. So I would get frustrated, but also once I started utilizing her, very excited by the fact that I could invite five people to do something and they would say no. And she could invite those same five people and they would say yes to her. And I'm not sure why, but she just had this particular gifting and anointing that people always said yes to her. So I knew if I wanted to invite someone into the alpha story to join team, to be a volunteer, I would ask her to ask them <laughs> to do it. And they always said yes. So such a helpful thing. Um, and, and just being mindful of the fact that we want to cast vision for what we're doing. It's not just a job description. It's always helpful for people who are volunteering to know what we're expecting and what we're asking them to commit to. Absolutely. But I think even as a church as, as a whole, we could do a little bit better about casting vision or, or sharing our mission for what we're doing and not just the need that we have to fill. So like if you're sitting in a parish and you're sitting in the pews and announcements time comes at your parish, wherever that is for us, it's after, you know, communion. And so the person gets up and then they're like, we need five volunteers for church ministry. And if it doesn't, if we don't get volunteers, we won't be able to have the program. So please see Susie so-and-so in the back of the church after mass. I'm not really going to feel like hightailing it back there to join something that it seems like nobody wants to sign up for. Um, and just to fill a need, right? But if someone got up and said, if you have a passion for children and help, helping them meet Jesus and know his love, we want to talk to you because we have an exciting opportunity. It's a very different way, right, of casting vision for what we're inviting people into on team. So cast some vision, encourage, inspire, and not just give a job description. Amen. Amen. And the last way we want to focus on getting volunteers is utilizing this pipeline. Now, obviously, if you're brand new, you got to be very intentional about building up this pipeline. But once you've been running Alpha two, three, four times, ideally, you've got all of these people who've been through your Alpha. And it's a great thing to invest in them to move them forward in this pipeline. In fact, it should be our goal that once we've established a rhythm of Alpha in our church, the majority, if not all, of our Alpha volunteers should be recent alpha guests. They're formed in this culture, they're formed in this experience, and they're ready to go on serving in a new capacity. Okay, so now this is my favorite part of every month when we get to our do's and don'ts. And Sarah and I, Sarah and I discussed this, and I think it's my turn to have the, uh, the burden of sharing with you the negative side of this, the don'ts. The first don't we wanna share with you when it comes to volunteers, to so this leadership pipeline, this leadership formation is don't operate out of a warm body mentality. This is the idea that we start with, with roles and functions that have to be fulfilled and, oh, let's just find somebody who can fill that spot. And maybe they have the giftings, maybe they don't, but we just gotta find somebody who can fill that spot because it's gotta be filled. Instead, we really need to make sure that we're focusing past um, what the role is and instead on who are the people with the giftings that, that are needed. Yeah. And so the do with this, and I mean, and what Josh is sharing, like we've all been guilty of, if you've worked in parish life, we've all come down to the 11th hour. So don't hear that as condemnation. That's, this is just encouragement uh, in a way that we can grow in this together. Um, so we do want to trust God to bring the right people for you to engage. We all know that that list, litmus test of a host or a helper at any one of our tables is, would we feel comfortable or confident 
for them to sit with our most unchurched friend or family member that we are desperate for them to know the love of Jesus that right we know that we have that but that means how are we going to find them and we want to trust that as we're praying God will bring them but that we do have a responsibility to for us to engage uh, them to to step out to take a leap of faith to invite the person that maybe you don't know uh, as well in the parish but you feel like the holy spirit's giving you a nudge that they have a particular uh, gift for hospitality or welcome or loving and listening to people um, and so trusting him but us doing our part in meeting god when he brings them that we would try to step out in faith and engage them um, in that invitation to serve mm. Our second don't is don't see, don't see people simply as fulfilling a job or a function. It's a really important part of this invitational nature of Alpha that everything that we're doing in Alpha uh, is uh, in full respect to our dignity and for our own formation as well as the formation of our guests. And so uh, it's really important that we see them as, as really part of the members of a family and that God is doing something special in them by means of the service that they are providing. And so we do want to see every role as formational, that we're forming, growing, um, so that we can eventually be going on mission together in the larger church. And I like to think, I was uh, thinking about this the other day, it's almost like little step stones. So we move from each step stone to the next step stone. But the beauty of it is, is if they're being formed in alpha, if they're being formed in alpha culture, alpha best practices, when you release them to larger service or a different ministry in the church, they're taking all of that alpha DNA with them. And when you have people with alpha DNA inside of them, with the heart of the father for the lost inside of them, it will then start to change, change and transform other ministries within the church. And that's when you'll see this culture start to really permeate of invitation, of dependence, of unity, of hospitality, every ministry in your church. So it's such a gift to the larger church that we invest in forming each person in whatever role they're in so that when they move on to the next step stone and then eventually into the larger church, they're taking lots of really good alpha DNA with them. That's great. And, and our last don't is don't let people stagnate inside the pipeline. Uh, Alpha is a wonderful place to be. I, honestly, it reminds me of my time at Francis University of Steubenville. It was such an incredible environment, an incredible culture uh, that it was really hard to leave. And in fact, there are a lot of people who just register to take their master's there because they don't want to leave or they finish their degree and they find a job in town because they don't want to leave the culture. An important element of Alpha is that, and this is a little radical, so hear this, every role in Alpha is designed to be transitional. Every role in Alpha is part of the beginning, the Alpha, not, not the Omega, the beginning, not the end. And so whatever function within Alpha at your parish is designed to be just for time, just for a season, thus creating space for you to go off and do something more, something better, something fuller in the work of the kingdom, and for the people who are coming on as guests and as helpers to be able to step into a new spot. Uh, a common mistake that we make in our church is, is letting Alpha be somebody's ministry that they own. And that stops this pipeline from meeting its potential. Yeah, I sort of think of this as if you're kind of climbing up over a rock or a mountaintop, right? That we're always reaching out our hand and lifting the person behind us into the space that we were as we continue on. And I think when we invest people in that process as well, like when we say to hosts, you know, to encourage the helper, that they're going to be stepping into that role. And then as they, you move on into another role, that they would move on to the role behind you. So we want to, of course, make space for that. And so we'd say, you've done such a beautiful job um, in helping raise up leaders who are moving in the pipeline behind you. And we want to continue to make space for them to move forward. And we also want to help you find your next calling in the church. Um, sometimes that can be hard. It can feel like this warm little cocoon where you find your people in Alpha but we do need a little of that boldness and that trust that God is going to help us take everything we've learned in Alpha and bring that to the next thing that he's calling us to. So we want to encourage people that we're going to help them with their transition at Alpha by calling out the gifting we see in them, calling out the prophetic identity God has given them as evangelists or teachers or whatever it is that God has uniquely created them to do, um, that they can take Alpha with them 
uh, and they have, of course, our relationship and our blessing as they go, but we need to help people do this well in the church. And I think what Josh is saying is so true that sometimes we haven't done it that great in the past, but I think if we're creating this healthy culture and life cycle um, as they move through Alpha in the pipeline, um, it will become easier and it'll just become the way things, do, the way things are done um, in Alpha and in our parishes when, when this pipeline takes hold uh, in our culture. Okay, so this has been just a very brief examination of this aspect of an invitational culture. Leadership development as something that we are inviting people into greater and greater leadership. Really encourage you to share this uh, video with your, your friends and coworkers, the folks you're working on Alpha with. Have conversations about how can you maximize this and what can we actually, what can you share with the larger church um, on how you yourselves at your parish, your unique situation, are diving into leadership formation as part of an invitational culture. We also just have a couple of exciting announcements to share with you. The first one is that we've officially uh, posted our speaker list for the upcoming Alpha Conference in Phoenix, Arizona at the end of January. Uh, so uh, very excited to have Father James Mallon as one of our speakers for this, year's, uh, for this year's conference. He, of course, is the author of the book, Divine Renovation from Maintenance to Mission. He's also recently released a book with Ron Huntley on unlocking your parish through Alpha. So it's going to be wonderful having him. Also, if you've never heard of Francis Chan, a Protestant pastor based out of the, the Northwest, highly encourage you to take a look at him. He's going to be one of our speakers as well. He's an author and renowned speaker, uh, speaks really ab about the power of an intentional church community and some all-Christian community. Wonderful speaker. I'm so excited to get to you here. Man. And I think... Aren't Nikki and Silla Lee going to be joining us as well, the creators of the marriage course? And I know some of you have been asking about, and we're hopefully going to have some teasers from the relaunch for you to see as part of the Alpha Conference in Phoenix. So you definitely want to join us. I know uh, people are starting to sign up really quickly, and we'd hate for you to miss out. So be sure to check out the link that will be in the follow-up email to uh, this particular webinar and register you. And maybe that's a way that God's inviting you to uh, or encouraging you to invite some more people on your team. Maybe you'll bring some people with you. They'll catch the vision and the mission and they'll be on fire to help you run alphas when you go back to your home parishes. And our second announcement we want to briefly share with you is just a couple weeks from now, August 20th through the 22nd, we are having the National Kingdom Come Prayer Initiative. So I encourage you to join, consider hosting a prayer event. You know, we've got literally thousands of alphas all over the country getting ready to launch in September and October. And we know that alpha is designed to fail unless God shows up. We know that prayer is the most important thing that we do. So I really want to encourage you to join us, be part of this initiative, and invite others to pray with us for the success of the work of evangelization as we strive to make disciples of all nations. And again, you'll see a link to our website uh, on the follow-up email to this, so you can find out ways that you can get involved with the Kingdom Come Prayer Initiative. All right, and speaking of prayer, why don't we go ahead and close our time together again. Thank you so much for, we know you, how busy all of you are. Thank you for taking this half hour to be with us as we start the month together. Let's go ahead and close our time together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time. We pray that uh, your spirit might continue to accompany us throughout this day and this week. We might be inspired to make the most of the concepts that we've explored here. Uh, pray that we might be able to identify the right team members in the right roles to be as effective as possible as we launch Alphas this fall. We pray for the upcoming conference. We pray for the prayer initiative. Uh, we pray that you might send grace on each church that is exploring for the salvation of souls and the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, Thank guys. You for your time. God bless you.